you let me straight to the fall. I'm broken, I'm so trying and skidding bone. Welcome back to another Chris Hansen video. Another one from his more modern show, Hansen Voices Predator, where a military veteran, I'm sure that means he's gonna use it as an excuse or some shit. I don't know. If you have any more suggestions from his more modern show, Hansen vs. Predator, or To Catch a Predator, let me know in the comments below. Also, thank you for making like part 1, 2, and 3 instead of just, I don't know, making it all in one video. I've caught more than 300 of these predators in the last decade, but since I last did this, social media has become like the Wild West for sex predators. Finding an underage child is as easy as tapping an app. These deviants troll sites like Whisper, Kick, and Grinder, And there are growing fears that even Pokemon Go could be used to lure children. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, I'm not gonna comment <laughs> on the Pokemon Go thing. I don't know. I, I just have to, like, hope someone told him the Pokemon Go thing. But, like, to be fair, to Chris and whoever told him to say this, or like, hey, throw this in as well. Like, there was a few articles of people concerned about these things, even if they really didn't check into them very much. The rise of the internet being more and more easy, and like phones and apps like that, like just has made it so much easier. Which is good that like people like Chris Hansen are still doing this. Posing as a 13 year old girl named Bailey. Buchanan is in the Connecticut National Guard and an Iraq war vet. He works for a local cable TV company. But today, Buchanan is the predator on the loose. He sends our decoys a video so graphic we can't show it on national TV and sends some sexually charged texts. You like sex? LOL, I'll be 14 next month. You know you're gonna shower with me Thursday night. I'm gonna pick you up and put you against the shower wall. Listen, I was about to make some jokes about him pacing back and forth and stuff like that and what was being said. But just look at this dude. This dude is gonna like slip in the shower. There's no way this dipshit looking dude has ever had sex in his life and knows what he's doing. I wish they said like what app he used. Like they hyped up all these apps and like I'm kinda confused or like curious. Like, did he use Pokemon Go to get here tonight? Buchanan calls Bailey to confirm the date. To the forward to me showing you around tonight. Detectives yeah. prepare for an arrest they fear could become violent. Pulls out a gun for any reason. Something You guys gotta jump on him fast. We're in very close quarters, and look at our lines of fire here. Almost nearly impossible to actually pull out guns. Our night vision cam shows Buchanan circling the block. Finally, he parks his car in the driveway and walks to the back door. But, like... I was so confused, why is this dude circling back and forth? And then I remembered, of course, he is scared, he's gonna get arrested. He knows it's a possibility, but he is just that interested. And that's one of the grossest parts of it all, is that most of them know it's possible that they are not making it back home, and they still want to take this risk, with the only little reassurance being that, oh, I drove back and forth a little bit, walked a little, I didn't see a police call. Hello? Hi. Hey. Uh, I'm here, I believe. Our on-site decoy, a 19-year-old theater student portraying Bailey, opens the door. I'm just really scared. Can, can you just, like, prove to me right now that you don't have a gun? Can you turn around? Man, why are they so concerned that he has a gun? Like, I don't know if there's a text message they didn't show yet. I mean, they already knew he was a veteran before he got here. So it could have been part of the conversation. Or maybe they just saw it from his jacket, I don't know. Which is kind of even worse. Like, this dude's not just a veteran doing this. He's disgracing the entire military by literally wearing a sweatshirt that says veteran on it. What's happening is even scarier than we anticipated. Buchanan is actually trying to lure Bailey into his car. Can you just like come in and we can chat for a little bit? I feel really weird about just like. I can come right there and chat. I'm not coming. Okay, in. yeah. You got some food if you want. Like what? I don't know. What do you, what do you like? I don't know. I just ate not that long ago. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not like that hungry. I'm... You want to show you around? Just, just be driving around, you know? 
trust her. I know it's him. This dude really wants to get on a call, but like, she lives here. <laughs> I don't get the like the show no around part. Like that's such a bad excuse. And they showed it a little bit on the phone earlier that like he said he was gonna do that. They should have just like bit that in the butt from the get go. Like, oh, we can come inside and talk for us. But obviously, he doesn't want to go inside. He doesn't want to risk getting caught. He wants to take her out of the situation and then do. I really don't want to know, but I know some of these people definitely have some bad intentions with bringing that person home of her. Like, some of them don't want that person to live after and get caught, or they might bring them back and not let them leave. When he tries to lure her into his car, you get you say, Shutter, if you don't fight it, you go home and I'll leave. From our control room, I'm watching our sting suddenly take an unexpected and potentially dangerous turn. I have to stop it before it gets out of hand. Stephen, I'm going to need to talk to you for a minute. Please come in. Come on in. Unbelievably, Buchanan comes inside to talk. I take him into the kitchen and grill him. He actually went inside. What did he think was going to happen? Like, the best case scenario is that he convinces the dude that he wasn't doing anything. Worst case scenario. Well, I mean, he's in the worst case scenario. Why don't you take a seat right over there? What was on the agenda tonight? I was, honestly, I was just going to take her out and show her around. Take her out and show her around where? Fairfield. Fairfield. That's it. And what exactly were you going to show her? The beach, the sites to go to. So you're the welcome wagon here in Fairfield. You're just going to do a favor for a 13-year-old girl. Uh. <sighs> oh god, he doesn't even have a response whatsoever. I can see why by far this part of this three-part videos that they posted has more views. Because I already like pre-looked. I think the last one had 2 mil. This has like 16 mil. I don't know how much part 3 has, but I'm sure it's less. I can make so many jokes about his like shitty responses, like he pretty much doesn't have any. But it's kind of weird, like they actually have one of the security people already standing at the door. Like they usually hide or something. They must be really concerned about like the safety. What happened was, okay. when my cousin came, right. she did the same thing. You, when your cousin came, she did the same thing, what do you mean? What's this? An older person. An older person came around. over and yeah. showed your 13 year old around town. And what happened in that case? She got assaulted. She got assaulted. And I was in the army. And I, would, I don't like people doing that. And you decided because you're former military and still in the National Guard, right? Yes. That you were going to come over and show this 13 year old girl around so she'd be safe. Yes. And you want me to buy that? Okay, y what? You can barely like say the story confidently. Thank God Chris repeated it. So he had a cousin who was assaulted. And he thought the best thing to do is do the same as that thing. Like if he was gonna say like, oh I came here, you know, to make sure no one else was doing that. You know what, uh, that kind of fits a little bit. Obviously he's lying. But the dude, what is your like reasoning that like, aha. I am gonna do that now. I'm telling you the truth, sir. Telling the truth, the sexually charged chat proves he's lying. And so what is all this talk back and forth between you and a girl you think is 13? You know you're going to shower with me Thursday night. What night is this? What night is this? Did you send her any pictures of yourself? You? can see the sweat on this dude. Where are your excuses and stories now? Oh my god. This dude is even worse at responding now. Because he just has none. Then you talk about actually having sex with her and Skyping it to an ex-boyfriend. Now that doesn't exactly back up your story about being the protector of Fairfield County, Connecticut, does it? I'm listening. There's a horrible lapse in judgment. A horrible lapse in judgment. Help me to understand what it was that really brought you here tonight. A horrible lapse in judgment is not making multiple decisions, multiple days, coming out here, saying you were gonna literally videotape 
what I child, things I probably can't even say on YouTube without getting this video taken down, and then sending it to someone. Either way, it's gross. I haven't been the same since I deployed to Iraq. Where were you in Iraq? Camp Marez. And you saw action? Yes, sir. It was just, I don't know, I, I do have problems sleeping at night. That's very common for returning. And I get that. I've never been to war, so I can't pass judgment on PTSD or any long-lasting effects. I can't. But I still have a difficult time connecting that to trying to sexually solicit a 13-year-old girl. Something just, just goes off in, inside of my head. Did you have these thoughts before you were in Iraq? No. Never. And how many times have you done this? Honestly? Honestly. It's my first. Your first time? First time. I gotta give Chris some credit here, just calmly speaking, being like, okay, I understand that. But even he has to say it. Where's the connection here? How does PTSD make you an online creep? And this was your first time? Who leaves in there first time being like, honestly, do you want the honest answer once? He's like, no! Gosh, I thought he sounded stupid when he wasn't speaking. I know PTSD is bad, especially for people in the military. I don't think there's a connecting point with these things here. Not saying he doesn't have it. It's obviously bad if he does. But it's not making him do these things tonight. The problem with that, Stephen, is that you surfaced talking in a very similar way to a girl named Brittany posing as a 13-year-old. I have that chat, too. Yes, I understand. So I said, you, my, you just lied to me. No. We have Bailey no, and we have Brittany. This, this, this is Bailey tonight. This is my first time doing it on a chat site. Oh, God, what a stupid technicality. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What I meant was... It's my first time doing it on this, like a chat website. Gosh, I never said I didn't do it in person. Come on, Chris, you're so stupid. Like, what's the technicality here? Oh, well, that's not a chat website. That is Pokemon Go. So, like, honestly, how many times have you done this? Afterwards, after I thought about it again, I told you we weren't going to do nothing tonight. Your intent is pretty clear. Can I, can I show you on... Um, I don't want you to reach in your pocket. Just can, can you reach him? What pocket is it? Go ahead, pull it up. And Ben, please have some. Okay. I hope Chris just takes the phone and just starts reading into it. Because by technicality, he just gave him the phone, right? Like that can be used as evidence because he, he didn't take it, he didn't steal it. I said, let's just hang out later. I know, but you know what that sounds like to me? It sounds like somebody who's trying to create some kind of a plausible excuse. You see how this looks, right? Yes, I know. So what do you think should happen? Bring me down to the police station. Well, there's something else that you need to know. I'm Chris Hansen, and this is an investigation called Hansen vs. Predator. Are you going to try to get some help? Yes. And I have your word on that. I'll shake your hand. All right, Stephen, you're free to go. Chris didn't even want the handshake. He just like gave a tone away. And I love it, calling him out, because it's always so annoying, these like way out excuses these people make. Oh, well, technically I said this. Well, yeah, but you have like five miles worth of pages of you saying otherwise. Oh, wow, this part got like almost 10 million. People really want to see the rest. After circling the house, you circled the house, you pulled in the driveway, you wanted her to get in the car with you, not even having met. That's a little creepy, I gotta tell you, Steve. I understand. Oh god, I love this little additional piece of the interview. That's great, he just called him like creepy. After I confront this predator, he leaves the kitchen and walks right into the arms of the police. He's handcuffed and put into the back of an unmarked police car. Is a weapon in the car? Yes. Hey guys, where is it? He's got his weapons are in the trunk. The cops search his trunk and make a shocking discovery. 40 caliber Glock. Along with the legally registered Glock semi-automatic, they find a knife duct tape, a camera, and a pack of condoms. I first feared it was what cops commonly call a kill kit. I was blown away. 
I think I've seen one of these in one of the episodes before. For those of you who don't know and can't do the math, it's a little bit of what I was saying earlier where they bring the person out and they don't want that person saying anything or getting them in trouble. But of course they're disgusting and sick people, so they're going to get a few photos, do what they want to do, and kill them. You can't tell me otherwise that this was not his intent. What do you think was going to happen if there was really a girl there and she got in that vehicle? Nothing good. Buchanan was never charged in connection with the items found in his car, but he's now on a one-way trip to jail. Try to keep it together for me, okay? I want to be able to talk to you. Our dash cam shows him sobbing all the way to the station. You know what? Good. He deserves that because God fucking damn, he doesn't get arrested connecting those points together, like anything he had with him doesn't count, that's ridiculous. And as Chris says, imagine if that was someone else, that they, like a real kid, they would be dead right now. And he doesn't get like an extra charge with that? At the very least, hopefully he gets arrested with the attempt to film child you know what. The evidence against him is overwhelming, and Buchanan ultimately pleads guilty to three felony charges. Attempted second-degree sexual assault, attempted risk of injury to a minor, and attempting to entice a minor in an obscene act. He was never charged in connection with the gun police found in his trunk. The sentence? 10 years, suspended after he serves at least three years in prison, and he must register as a sex offender. We got a bad one off the streets. Man, I was hoping for a little bit more. Cause like, I don't know, when did this come out? This came out about like six years ago. So reasonably, he could have already gotten his parole sentence. He's done over half. Not six years, it could be seven if, you know, tomorrow, you know how the YouTube thing works. It's not like it's gonna say six and a half years or anything like that. And I think I see one of the comments as he's saying that he got out at the end of Three year mo what? The this is just ridiculous. I'm so annoyed. I'm just gonna have to end this video. I heard Chris has a new show that just came out. So I don't even think I'm gonna take a break from doing a Chris Hansen video. And as soon as I get the time, I'm gonna record another one reacting to his new show. Hope you guys have a good night. I'm done with hitting your wall. Sure notice, I just gotta let you know. You let me straight to the fall. I'm broken, I'm still trying skin and bones. You let